So it's here's not heresy. It's come on. No, it's Harris' son. Wow! They gave us nothing but tradition and no argument. All they did was get on this stage, yell real loud, and set a straw man on fire. Okay, uh, this is... I, I... I was... not impressed. <laughs> Respectfully, that sounds like a little bit of a dodge. I'm claiming victory. So where I come from, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Why is this so difficult? I'm not... Welcome to Trinity Radio. I'm Braxton Hunter, and along with me is... Me. And today, we're going to be talking about whether or not people really do believe based on the evidence. This is the first word. Starbucks, dragons, and Jesus. Currently, the internet is all buzz over the last season of the popular HBO program, Game of Thrones. Now, whether you watch Game of Thrones or not, you can't help but have seen the news stories about this program. One of the things that got the internet world all in a bustle the other day was the fact that the dragon mother from Game of Thrones was seen in one of the most dramatic moments, apparently, with a Starbucks coffee cup sitting in the shot in one of the popular episodes. They've taken two years to put this program together to make sure that everything is spot on and all the details are there. It's been praised for its consistency. Yet, the mother of dragons, the arguably star of the show, the woman who has become the goddess to all geeks in the world currently, is a fraud. How do I know she's a fraud? She's not the mother of dragons, she's the drinker of Starbucks. Christian mythicists love to say that the most influential human being in all of history, Jesus of Nazareth, didn't really exist. Where is your Starbucks cup, internet? Where is the Starbucks cup in the hand of Jesus or at the foot of the cross? Until you produce it, none of us should believe you. And now, today's topic. And we're back to the main show where we're going to talk about whether or not people actually come to believe what they believe, either about the Christian faith or even whatever faith. Do they ever, do people, anyone, ever come to believe based on evidence? And we've heard a lot lately, especially with regards to Christianity, people asserting, ah, nobody ever comes to Christianity based on the evidence. Surely not. Yeah. I don't believe anyone has ever done that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So um, the impetus for this is recently. I made a video that you can check out on this channel in response to two atheist YouTubers. And uh, in the comments feed to that video, they began to comment. And one of the things that we heard from, from one of the particular characters that, that I was reviewing was, uh, yeah, the, I don't think we ought to talk about the evidence so much because that's not really why, why people believe. People really believe based on you know, that they got married. Th one of the other people, I think, said this, but because they marry into it or uh, they have something bad happen in life and so they, ha they, they, you know, they, they find God because they need some kind of support or help in the midst of crisis or uh, they were raised in it or whatever. And th these more emotional, these more personal reasons are the reasons that people believe. And so no one really comes to faith based on the evidence. So the comments I just made are, are kind of a conglomerate of what I heard in the comments feed. Yeah. But, but two or three of these people were saying, nobody really comes to belief, or if it, they do, it's rarely because of the evidence. What was particularly interesting about this was that in one of the sub-threads in the comments section, there was this person making this claim. One of the YouTubers that I that I talked about is Pine Creek. He was saying this, and and in that very thread, there was only three of us. There was me, him, and one other guy, at least for a while. That other guy was Ian, who we know from you know the the, the our Facebook group and everything. Yeah, our, our, so, our so Scottish friend from uh, Scottish, Australia, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> living yeah. in Australia. But. Wait, he lives in Australia? I think so, doesn't he? I don't think so. But he can tell us. Yeah. But anyway, he's from Scotland. Yeah. And um, he says, and he's like, well, wait a minute. I came to faith partly because of something to do with the evidence regarding the crucifixion of Jesus. And then uh, an another guy started commenting, and, and, and his name was Kip something, I think. Kit and, Horton? No, no, no. Kip. 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 
Yeah. I don't want to say his last name because I don't know if I'm, if you'd want me to. But Kip, you can find him in the comments feed. And currently, he's close to the top. You know, if you just click newest comments first, he's like up there pretty high. And Kip is like, I came to believe partly because of the, uh, partly because of the uh, evidence, scientific evidence. Really? So, yeah. So, so here's the thing. <laughs> okay. So here, now you're skeptical. Uh, no, I'm not skeptical. I'm like, of all the wonderful proofs for God's exam- existence, the science stuff. This is just because you of your thing about science. Yeah. But the point is, so I said... Thomas so I, Kuhn said that science is a history of failed ideas. So I said to Pine Creek in this comments feed, I said, do you realize that you're here saying no one or rarely ever does anyone come to faith based on the evidence? And yet we are in a the comments stream of a relatively lowly trafficked YouTube video and in a sub comment stream of that comment stream. And there's only three of us here and we've already run into one such character. And then the, the, there was another guy who's like, the, the, nobody comes. And like in this very uh, comments feed, there are several, at least two people, and I think there's more, who say that they came to faith based on the evidence, which means that our atheist comments. Dang it, you're right. He doesn't live in Australia. Okay. Why did I think that he lived in Australia? Now you know who's got your back, Ian. Why did um, I think that? Because we do have several Australian listeners. But I knew he was Scottish, but I thought he was some for some reason. Anyway. I don't, I don't know. But you're messing up my flow here. Here's the flow. So either these atheist folks who question whether anyone really comes to... See, here's what I think they have. I think they, they have this mantra that the evidence is so bad. The evidence is just terrible. How could anybody be convinced in the evidence? The only reason anybody, they have to have been raised in it. So then when reasonable, intelligent people do become Christians and God use the evidence or the mm-hmm. evidence plus other things or whatever, the fact is they can't grant that because if they grant that, then it means that maybe it's just my personal opinion that the evidence is bad right. and maybe it's not bad. Well, that, that's, that's what it all comes down to. But I mean, I could have swore earlier this year, and maybe I dreamed this, that you and I were in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, talking about evidence all weekend, and then Sunday morning, a bunch of people got saved. Yeah, a bunch of people came to Christ, yeah. yeah after spending a whole weekend, hours, talking about evidence. Well, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, just to settle this like from the outset, in the... Uh, video itself that we're referencing, Godless Engineer and Pine Creek, My Responses, which is on our YouTube channel right before this one, I think. Uh, I mentioned Drew, who used to work here at Trinity, and how yeah. he can, and I put up on the screen, I don't know if you watched it, but I, I put up on the screen yeah, no. this My blog name. article that Drew wrote that explains that it was the evidence. I haven't watched it yet. Is Okay. okay. And then... Uh, I didn't say this in the video, but one of my favorite stories from my personal ministry is, you remember uh, in 2017, I was in Ireland, and, uh, and, and on one night, let me, let me tell this again, because people haven't heard it, uh, on one night, we were doing this Q&A, and I was actually bothered that I'd been there for several days, and we really hadn't seen much response, you know, as, as a result of the preaching, whatever, and I was yeah. kind of thinking, what am I doing here in Ireland? Why am I here? Why did God bring me here? What's going on? And uh, yet, we did this Q&A night. And we sat back there and prayed, which is a common practice among evangelicals or fundamentalists, before we go out and, and preach the gospel or do an apologetics event or whatever, we might pray in a back room somewhere. So I was sitting back there with some of the deacons for this church and the pastor, and I was sitting on this particular spot on this pew that was in a back room praying. And this is going to sound a little bit Calvinistic, my phraseology here, but I'm telling you what happened faithfully. Oh, you mean you actually believe in providence like a Christian? Well, no, no, no. (laughs) The the biblical phraseology that I use here, the way I'm using it. But I said, Lord, I pray that tonight for someone here, there would be someone who has all their questions, all their deepest questions answered, and that they get something like a gift of faith as a result of what happens tonight. You've heard my own okay. gift of faith. Okay. We need to do an episode on the gift of faith. So, So I'm sitting on this particular spot on the pew, and I pray this in the back room. After the thing is over, it was a lively discussion, maybe the liveliest q and I've ever been a part of. These Irish people, you know, they, they, some of them got pretty aggressive and uh, loud. But anyway, at the end of it, this woman in her late 20s, early 30s, I don't know, she came forward, to, or someone said, would you talk to this lady? And um, 
gosh, I'm trying to remember her name. I've got her name in the in the in the YouTube. I made a, a kind of like a travelogue about my trip to Ireland. Yeah. You can go back and find it in the topical videos feed. And I, I tell this, and there's music and everything. will make you cry, I think. And uh, so this girl, so this girl comes forward. My production values are better. It's pretty for, good for that than Trinity Radio. Is well, that's saying. one of my favorite videos. <laughs> it's pretty darn good. So anyway, she. So they said, would you talk to this girl? She, she's she's she's. Uh, wanting to become a Christian, and she wants to talk to you. So we go back, me and her and one other person, we go back to the same back room where we had prayed. Yeah. I go in after her, and she's already sitting down in the very spot I was sitting in when I prayed. Mm-hmm. And what she said to me was, she said, I was sitting, I was sitting there listening, and every major question that was keeping me from faith was answered. And it was almost like there was, I don't know how you Christians would put it, but it's almost like there was a gift of faith or something. The same phrase that I prayed for, okay? She uh, prayed to receive Christ, repented and trusted in Jesus. And uh, she, I heard from her uh, about a year later, I was at an apologetics conference about to take the stage Mm -hmm. in Granbury, Texas, and talk about people coming to faith based on the evidence. And as I was about to take the stage, I get an email or a Facebook comment from her telling her testimony about the thing all over again so that I was able to get up in the apologetics conference and read her testimony to the crowd and tell them I just got this right when I was about to step on stage. That to me, there are several things about that that are very powerful and a little too suspicious, a little too coincidental. And things that she couldn't, you know, couldn't have known and predicted, and things I couldn't have known and predicted. And so here's the thing, and this is one of the things I want to say, and maybe I'm blowing the whole thing too early in the episode, but here's my thing about this. When Matt, and I know I'm talking a lot, so after this I'll shut up and let you talk, okay? But when Matt Dillahunty, when, when I was listening to him, when I was preparing for our debate, I was listening to some of his videos and debates. He talks about when people say that he didn't really try to believe or he didn't really search for God, um, you know, and all that thing. He says that is so personally offensive that, like, when you say that, atheists will just shut you off because they know that's ridiculous. I know my experience, and I know I was searching for God, so who do you think you are, you presumptuous jerk, that you would presume to know my experience, right? Okay, fair enough. So let me tell you the Christian return on that. The Christian return on that is you have this party line that the evidence is terrible, and you can't let that go. You you need that to be true. I get it. So, But whenever you tell us Christians that people don't come to faith because of the evidence, or at least in part because of that great evidence, and we are evangelistic, and some of us came to faith based on that evidence, some of us have evangelized regularly and seen stories like the ones I just described, what you basically you lose all credibility. Not that we think you're a liar or something, but we think you just don't know enough to be talking about this because if you had done what we've done, if you know what we know, you know that that's just ridiculous and you lose credibility. And when you talk that way to people, you kind of confirm us in our theism. Well, (laughs) the thing that... It's easy to psychoanalyze people, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can do that all day long and convince yourself, yeah, but it wasn't really just the evidence. Okay, well, so when someone says, well, I, I had a deep faith, and then I, I started questioning the things that I believed, and, and they're just the evidence didn't hold up, so I left Christianity based on the evidence. I can just, No, you didn't. You left because you wanted to go uh, to strip clubs. Right, like we can do the reverse is what you're right. saying. Right, we can do that all day long, you know, and then then because you wanted to go to strip clubs, or you and, married someone who yeah, wasn't a Christian. Yeah, or you or you're yeah, you married someone who wasn't a Christian. They talked to you out of faith, and they divorced you, and then you start espousing the virtues of uh, call girls on your YouTube show. Or you're only you were only you know? raised in an atheist household. That's why you don't believe. Right. It. I mean, we can right. do that all day long. Now, granted, humans are complex, right? I don't think that. Only evidence convinces everyone to go one way or the other. Yes, this is key. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I believe someone like Matt Dillahunty's testimony that um, 
he started questioning the, the foundations of his beliefs, and then he realized that it just didn't hold up compared to whatever else he was reading, whatever authorities he decided were better than, than Christian authorities, and then decided that the evidence just didn't work for him. Mm-hmm. Fine. I, I, I pro- that's probably true. You know what else is true? There were probably other things, too. Right. Just like when Drew came to be a Christian, there was probably other things. Philip Johnson um, was probably having a hard, you know, uh, became a Christian, realized after reading C.S. Lewis, oh, you can be smart and believe this, but probably also had other issues going on in his life as well, and he'll admit that, you know. Um, so, yeah, people are complicated. But to, to say that the evidence one way or that, that can cut both ways. I can do that all day long. Say, you didn't leave because of the evidence. You just wanted to go uh, to strip clubs. You just wanted to cheat on your spouse. You just wanted to go, uh, you know, do whatever. Yeah. You, know, you can say that all day long. And they, Christians, Christians with their worldview, it makes sense to say, that. I, well, you just really love sin more than Jesus. I mean, that's, right. I mean, it'd be so easy for a Christian to say, I don't, I don't think that. I don't think that that's actually relevant to the issue of whether or not yeah, evidence... you got to deal with the yeah, evidence. Yeah. So my thing is, okay, fine, it could be the evidence plus, but not, not the plus without the evidence. And that goes both ways, right? Right. Uh, for, for people who leave the Christian faith or people who come to Christian faith based on the evidence. I think evidence is, is for, at some degree or other, and probably larger degree for some than others, right? Um. Could it be evidence plus this, but mostly the evidence? Yeah, that's very possible that someone mm-hmm. comes to faith based on the... People are wired differently. Right. Right. You Some know, people are just Spocks, and they just want it laid out like that. Right. Other people are emotional wrecks, but you know what? Oh, uh, overly emotional against the problem of evil, but for some reason the solution, along with a whole bunch of other things like feeling, uh, you know, the weight of... Uh, of guilt lifted off of them or whatever else that might be bigger than, than, than the solution to the problem of evil, but that was part of it. Yeah. Or for someone, all the intellectual evidence is 80% of it. And then a little bit of it was emotional. Yeah. We Fine. all, and, and, yeah. and, and so there, and we all have biases. We, everybody says that we all have biases. Some people are genuinely biased in the direction of, yeah, I'd like Christianity to be true. We'll come back to that in a moment. Yeah. Other people are biased toward, I don't want Christianity to be true. I, I, you know, I've even heard atheists on both sides of that. I wish I believed that Christianity is true. It'd be fantastic. I think it's wonderful. I'd love to know that I've got a future uh, after this life and all that sort of thing. I've heard other atheists like Matt Dillahunty, like Christopher Hitchens, say, like Dan Barker, say, no, I don't believe it, and I don't want it to be true, right? right? So there's both sides of that. Yeah, it's like, We all have biases. Yeah, it's like with Jesus. I hear some atheists are like, Jesus was a wonderful moral teacher, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Others are like, well, he didn't, he didn't speak out for uh, climate change and, and, and gay rights, so therefore, and, and he didn't abolish yeah. slavery and didn't, didn't want us to pick up trash. He didn't advocate for my pet, you know, public policy, so therefore... Jesus stinks. So you get yeah. you get that on both sides about Jesus. You get yeah. atheists who who think Jesus was awesome, and atheists mm-hmm. who think Jesus stunk. Yeah. So yeah. we all have biases, and one of the things that's important to mention when you when you get onto this thing of well, you only believe because you want it to be true. Okay. This is this is the wish fulfillment claim that we're just yeah. people only believe based on wish fulfillment. Here's the thing. Let's grant you. Let's grant everything. Let's grant it all. Okay. What if I granted that every single person who has ever been a Christian was only a Christian because they were raised in it? Now, we know that's factually false, but let's just say that was the case. Every single Christian, that doesn't even work logically, but every single Christian who's ever been a Christian was only a Christian because they were raised in it. If we granted that, so... You still got to deal with the evidence. Yeah. You know, any... This is my new thing I've been saying a lot lately. Any criticism to which the Christian can respond, so what then that's a poor criticism, yes. right? So so what? Okay, well, um, what if you said uh, you, every Christian that's ever been a Christian is only a Christian because they want it to be true? So? Oh, guess what? So what? So what? Guess what else? I want it to be true. Yeah. Do little so girls... So what? What does that have to do with anything? Do little, do little girls wish for their wedding day, and little boys wish for their mm-hmm. wedding day? Yeah. Do some of them get married? Yeah. Do some teenage girls... And guys wish to marry someone who's got a lot of money and is good looking. Yes. Does it sometimes happen? 
Yes. Do some wish to marry someone with a lot of money who's really good looking and that they'll have an incredible marriage with? Yes. Does it sometimes happen? Yes. Does it always happen? No. But what this shows is whether we're believing based on wish fulfillment or whether we're believing based on the evidence, you still have to deal with the evidence and it could still be true. Yes. Right? That's that's the pl- claim here. This is the thing. But we do have really great evidence and it is demonstrable that some people oh, come to believe this. Oh, 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 oh. What do you mean great? Uh, that's bad. You have bad evidence. That's oh, what we hear all the time. Oh, you mean bad I have evidence, evidence, but it's bad evidence. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So what you're telling me is I do have it. This is what we got from one of the characters that I was talking about in the video. He said that they paint this bad evidence as actual evidence. Hold on. Bad evidence as actual evidence. So you're granting that it's evidence. It, you just don't like it. That's yeah. what we're saying. It doesn't convince you. Well, that's fine. It's yeah. one of the things... Yeah, was, the quality of the evidence is actually independent than how people feel about the right, evidence. it's still evidence. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's not bad evidence just because you don't like it. That's autobiographical. You're just telling me that you don't, you're don't. you not convinced by it. Whatever. So people show me evidence all the time for uh, evolution, right? Mm-hmm. Evolution's true. Look at all this mm-hmm. evidence. And I'm like... I'm not saying it's bad evidence. I'm saying I'm not convinced by it. So I'm not going to call it bad evidence. Or good. If I call it bad evidence, now I have a burden to show why it's bad evidence. I don't care enough about the subject. Right. But I'm still not convinced of it. So so let's take a sample. and people. I can tell you why I'm not convinced of it, but that's yeah. different than my that's labeling. That's about it. you and your psychology. Yes, it's not about why, I th- why the evidence itself is bad. Right. Now, it could be, but I have to show that. And if my psychological reasons for not being convinced of it uh, don't demonstrate the evidence bad. It, I mean, you know, you can have evidence for anything. Anything, you know, it, whether or not it's good or bad is is all subjective to the person. Unless you can demonstrably show, mm-hmm. you have to actually show that. Though you have to say, like in the case of Tacitus, wasn't that the the thing that kind of? Well, I was about to go there. Yeah, it's to say that it's bad evidence. Without showing why it's bad evidence, like you giving going from point A to point B, you, all you've said yeah. is so. And especially you don't like with Tacitus, yeah. he says, "Well, oh, okay." He said this today in a comment. He said, "Okay, fine. You did. You, no, he said you did only bring the scholars. You didn't bring any actual evidence." Okay, you mentioned Tacitus, but that's not evidence because it doesn't. I it does. I don't know. It doesn't convince me or something. Or I don't can consider it good evidence. Here's the thing about that. Your opinions make no difference to what actually counts as evidence. The thing is, Bart Ehrman of all people, John Dominic Crossan of all people, think that Tacitus statements about Jesus being executed under the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate is powerful confirmatory evidence that Jesus died under Pontius Pilate by Roman execution. Right. Now, if you've got if you've got these scholars, Paul Eady, uh, Bart Ehrman, you've got John Dominique Crossan, all these people. Uh, who's your guy? Uh, I don't know. There's another guy. You've got all these guys saying, yeah, this is, this is powerful evidence. Okay, should I believe some guy on the internet who doesn't like the evidence, and so I won't call it evidence because it hurts his feelings for me to call it evidence, or should I go with what all of these powerful scholars on both sides of the issue think? It's evidence. No, what we've got here is it's evidence, and it's not even just that it's yeah, kind it's, of evidence. It's incredible now, evidence. Is it? Yeah, it's incredible evidence for what the evidence is for, though. It's yeah, evidence that for, Jesus died by Roman right. Execution. It's not evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. Mm-hmm. It's evidence that he died by the hands of Pontius Pilate, which is what I just had to tell someone in the Facebook group. Right. So, pay attention <laughs> to yeah. what's being to what's actually being said. First yeah. um, Corinthians fifteen three through seven. That's powerful evidence that people all, pretty soon after G- the events surrounding Jesus' death and resurrection were claiming that he was dead, buried, rose again, appeared to these guys, appeared to these 500 guys. You know, that's right. powerful evidence and that's, that. And that's evidence that people claim that. Right. Nobody that's right. said that's evidence. Proof, Jesus, because they that's said right. so. No, that's not the argument. It's evidence that people immediately after Jesus' death or shortly after right. Jesus' death believed these things and uh, and then you go to the uh, issue about the martyrs, like Sean McDowell's dissertation. Yeah. Uh, you go to all the early Christian sources and some secular sources in the uh, early early uh, you know first second third century to see how these guys died and if they died, and yeah. that is powerful evidence that so, they changed their lives. Yes. Based so what on you're this. doing is is you're establishing facts and providing evidence that establishes right. the facts you establish. 
Then. And then from there, you make an inference to the best explanation for what accounts for the yeah. data using... Abductive reasoning. Yeah, using you know the historical means for... The criteria. Yeah. So, which we've talked about on previous podcasts. You say, yeah, but you're going to need... These are all mundane facts on their own. You're going to need some extraordinary evidence to back up these extraordinary claims. No, you know what you need? Sufficient evidence to back up these claims. Yeah. Right? What, what, what did we come up with last, a couple weeks ago or last week? Un, uncommon claims... Re- Require additional evidence. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it, 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 the, the, we, this extraordinary claims requires what? No, it, there's no glow in the dark. In his debate with uh, yeah. somebody, yeah. Matt Dillon he recently said, and I agreed with him. I thought this was great. He said about this extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. He said, "Here's an extraordinary claim. I've got the winning lottery ticket. Okay, okay, that's an extraordinary claim. All right, what's the extraordinary or what's the extraordinary evidence? He says that that substantiates that claim." You see me take it in and get the money for it. Okay, yeah. That's, but that's sufficient evidence to demonstrate the claim, yeah. right? I agree. I agree. So what is the sufficient evidence to warrant the resurrection? Okay, a man claimed that he was a part of, first of all, I've got God, because you guys still need to deal with my theistic arguments. Yeah. Uh, you have a sufficient power to do something like resurrection. Oh, but the Kalam was debunked. You're, you're, oh. there's a, you there's, know, they salivate a, over the word debunked. Atheists salivate over the word debunked. You look at their videos, it's all debunked, 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 debunked. It's like a, there, some other guy said it's but like why they're Pavlovianly they never, conditioned. But why do they never debunk anything in these videos? Well, it's, it's, it's clickbait, you know? Yeah. That's what it is. But here's the okay. thing. You've got God. I'm still waiting for these debunkings. You've got Jesus claiming to be a part of God's special program as if he's holding up a sign saying, watch my life and just see what happens. You've got the claim. You've got his death. You've got the cl- people having experiences that they claimed were appearances of the risen Christ. And you've got their willingness. They're altering their life to such a degree that many of them were willing to die for this claim. Now, if we want to go further, you've got Paul, an enemy of the faith. Mm -hmm. You've got James, the family skeptic. Mm -hmm. You've got all these things. You've got the names of some of these people so that at least we know, and this counts for something, that people in time could have gone and checked it out if they wanted to. You've got all these facts. Now, what's your explanation for these facts? They won't give it to us. They won't tell us. And that's another another thing in our pot of evidence because it's like they've given up the alternative hypothesis Mm -hmm method of yeah. explaining those facts. They, they've given... No, I don't want to bother with this. I'm just... Mm-hmm. Supernat- God's not real. There's no supernatural anything. Blah, 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 blah. That's, mm-hmm. that's just a worldview statement. That's not actually proof of anything. It's not an alternative hypothesis. And they, they don't give them because they know they all fail. Yeah. And they get embarrassed every time they throw one out. This is why people like Bart Ehrman... My understanding is now that Bart Ehrman is saying, don't try to do that. Don't yeah. try to construct a competing hypothesis. Why? Because in the words of Jonathan Pritchett, when I was at his house just before I went down to the debate with Matt Dillon, he mm-hmm. said, yeah, you know why they don't do that anymore? It's because every time they try to give a competing hypothesis that matches the criteria and all the data, it gets shredded by the Christian apologists. Yes, and you're absolutely every time. right. Every time. And so they've given it up. So now it's just, well, let's just stump on, it's just presuppositionalism. Well, there's no God, there's no supernatural anything. Yeah. It's it could, rhetoric, it's yeah. emotion, it's yeah, right. these kind of things. Yeah. I've never seen it. Well, guess what? I've never seen Alaska, but I believe in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, and the same people who say, I've never seen, you've never seen one species give rise to a completely different species Yeah, but you believe either. that. Where's your skepticism right. on that? Right. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, but it's science. So here's oh, what. Oh, we, we still got to, we, we need, to, we need to do the science is the new religion. We got to do that one. So here's like a that. couple of things I still want to say about this. So when you say to someone, you get, so you, let's, let's imagine this, because this happens all the time. It happened last night in the comments section. You've got someone saying, no one or rarely ever does anyone come to faith by, uh, partly because of, or predominantly because of the evidence. And then you produce people who You've have. You've got people who say, <laughs> in this relatively low-trafficked comment section, and you know what also occurs to me? My first interaction with this guy was in on JMD Apologetics 101. Hi, JMD Apologetics 101. He's a, he's a listener. He's had me on a show. I did a show with him. He had me and, on a show. And in the comment, well, he should. And we haven't had him. If you want to have a good guest, no, I'm just kidding. Well, that's you are a good guest. I don't disagree with that statement. I I disagree with. I disagree with the way you're (laughs) characterizing it. (laughs) In comparison, so I would never do that to you. But um, so you've got you've got. We were on that show. I was on that show, and in the comments feed, me and this guy were talking about this. 
And he says that same thing. And I say something about, he asks me, why did I come to faith? Yeah. And I said, well, I probably came to faith because I was raised in it, because I wanted it to be true. But then later I had personal experiential reasons to believe. And then in my early 20s, I, I, I discovered the evidence, took my worldview apart, put it back together, and it held. Now, now my experience matches what he says happens. Yeah. That apologetics is good for people who are already Christians but are experiencing doubt. I think that that's fine. That is fine. I agree with it. It's not the only use for it. But he says it rarely or if ever happens with people who are not believers. In that comments feed, there was another guy who says, uh, or another gal, I can't remember, who said, Braxton, I wish I had your personal experience. I've never had a personal experience. Like I don't think she would say she never had a personal experience of God, but she said she never had an experiential evidence like where she could point to. She merely believes based on the evidence, and has been a Christian because she merely believes based on the evidence. Yeah. Okay, so there are people... Like, this means that every time I've interacted with this guy, in relatively lowly viewed comment sections of YouTube, people have popped up that match his criteria. So, here's what that... See, this makes me wonder if they even took a freshman introduction to philosophy course in college. Because in any freshman introductory Introduction to philosophy course. You know what you're always told? What? Don't make grand claims. It's easier to defend a weaker claim. Right. Don't say, nobody has ever come to faith based on the evidence. Well, that's well, easy to not. He down. says, maybe it's sometimes, but it's rare. That's still a... That's still a pretty big claim. Reaching claim. It's like um, when Phil Johnson was arguing with Michael Brown about after the strange fire thing, he was like, oh... Charismatics and Pentecostals haven't built hospitals anywhere in the world compared to evangelicals. Guess what? They're like everywhere. When you make dumb claims like that, it shows that you've never even taken a basic introduction to philosophy course. Don't talk like that. Well, it's. I mean, hyperbole is fine. Yeah. Hyperbole is fine, but he, that's not being hyperbolic. You're actually serious with this yeah. stuff. Yeah. So here's so here's what I want to get to. So every time I talk to this guy. We've seen people produced in relatively yeah. low numbers, which means the sample sizes. I mean, we <laughs> this is a good percentage of the people yeah. that are there. Okay, so now here's but, but but then they would say, "Ah, oh, come on now, you're just saying that you know that's not the real reason why you became right." Now here's this is what I want to get to. Yeah. So what if you're this person making this claim because you need it to be true that the evidence is so bad, right. or you personally don't find the evidence good, so you can't see how anyone else would think it was good. Um, you're saying one of a couple of things. Now let's work through and see how many different ways someone could mean this. So if you say to this person, you've got, you've now been confronted with a person who says, well, I did. Okay. So now you are either going to say you're lying. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think most of them would say that, but they do with Lee Strobel. They say he's just lying. Okay, so really? I'm not saying that Pine Creek does that, but people have said that. Just Google it. This is where I want to open the door for Cy Brug and Kate, who, whatever, for whatever. Just Okay, uh, Cy Brug and Kate, now you're, go ahead and tell them that they're all lying and that they're really theists and that they're just lying. Yeah, about they know there's theist. a God, they're all just lying, right. right? That's where you... This is not what I say, but that's what Cy right. wants to and say. And that's where I'm like, if you're going to act like that, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna right. to open the door, let Cy come in and just say that all day long to you because, it, oh, it makes you mad? Well, stop being Cy Brug and Kate. Right. If you don't like Cy Brug and Kate, don't act like him. Yeah. So... Otherwise, shut up and just, that he's your guy. You're just like that. Prime. That's why you wear no, the No, I'm just saying. I, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. You so, can't trash the guy and behave like him. That's like, right. You know. So, so, so here's the thing. So you say they're lying. Okay, if you're going to say they're lying, how presumptuous of you. And you know what? I don't think we should talk to you anymore. Because if you just think that... if it, I mean, I'm not someone who did come to faith because of the evidence. But if you're someone who did come to faith because of the evidence and you're talking to someone who just thinks you're lying, stop talking to them. They're not being reasonable. They don't care what you have to say. They've already decided you're a liar, so whatever you say, they're not going to give it any credibility. I came to Christ so based just, on the evidence. Did you? Yeah. Internal. Are you going to say internal evidence? No. Oh, because you got uh, Lee Strobel and... No. What? There was a claim made. Mm-hmm. You're a sinner. Yeah. I looked at my life. There's evidence. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So n- that what my, my whole point is, is number one... I reject the idea that that historical or scientific facts are the only things that count as evidence for anything. 
That's yeah, yeah. You now this is a point. So I when made. I say I came based on the evidence, I came based on the evidence of that I did feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. that I understood that I was a sinner, and that the only way that I could ever have salvation is if something like Christianity was true, mm-hmm. because I've heard plenty of other religions and nothing like that seemed compelling. Now that's probably to most atheists terrible evidence. Yeah, and it may be terrible evidence. You got to show it. Uh, you got to show it to be so. But what I'm saying is, no, I'll say it for you. Yeah. So fideism is the belief that you're just believing on blind faith in the collo- colloquial right. and not biblical sense of faith. That you're just blindly jumping off the, you know, off the cliff, and you don't have any idea what's on the other side. You're just totally believing based on blind faith. I don't believe that anyone no. comes to faith. I don't believe fideism is real. I don't either. Because everyone believes on the basis of some evidence. The thing is, it just may be evidence that none of the rest of us would place it right. on. Right, it's not... It's, you know, at the very least, you're basing it on the evidence that other his, people's testimony... Right, it's not necessarily the type of historical or scientific evidence normally talked about in apologetics. Right. But but if you believe because your parents told you this was true, that's that's a claim. That's a, that's right, some, but I also believe that my wife loves me based on evidence, but it's not scientific evidence, and it's not yeah. historical evidence. Well, right. kind of historical. I mean, based on performance. But I didn't know that when, when she first said it. When she first told me that she loved me, what what did I have evidence? Right, but, that's right. But I did come to believe that, you know... And we could look at that relationship, and we could quantify certain acts she takes and figure it out scientifically that there is good evidence that she has these amorous feelings towards yeah, not, you or whatever. Not at the moment. But that's not what convinced you. That may be right. what would convince other people that she loves you. Right. But that's what convinced you is that she loves you. But my, me. Experience, my personal, experience personal experience with her is right. what convinced me, and I think that that counts as evidence. Sure. It might not be good evidence. You may not believe that she, she loves me. Yeah. I do, but... I mean, I know, but... uh, If I didn't... Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, number one, I don't like like the idea that we use words like facts and data and evidence for anything that's quantifiable in science or, or, or history, even, or philosophy, even. Some things are just beyond... This is... This, it all goes back to... This is why I think that we've lost something of, 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 of human disciplines, like the disciplines of not just science, but the humanities and the arts and everything else, when we decided that science is number one king of the only way to know anything, Mm -hmm. or even history or or hard sciences or whatever, no, you can know truth through art, poetry, other things as well. And 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 experience. Yeah, go read The Abolition of Man. The, The more and more we become to this bogus type of thinking, I'm convinced you end up with people becoming stupider. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, here's the thing. Or or ignorant. And I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call these people on the uh, these YouTube atheists who you're fussing with. Some of them are just ignorant because they're just spouting scientism, oh, yeah. and that they don't even they they don't even have the the understanding to 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 see that that itself is self defeating, mm-hmm. right? Because you can't support it. Right. It's not hard scientism. Right. Is, so yeah. get away from this. I and most people in kind of a folk reason, understand that you can know things through other means than sure. science. Sure, but here's the thing. It's actually better than that. Why did most Christians throughout church history believe it was true? Why did most people in the 20th century in the American South believe it was true? You could say, well, it's because they were raised in it, but if you ask them, they might say that. This is what I was raised to believe. But if you press them further, they'd say, well, because the Bible says so. All right, now, mm-hmm. that sounds silly because it's been made to sound silly. But what are they saying? Let's put that in better language. Well, I believe this because a collection of historical documents that seems pretty reliable says so. That's what they're saying. Yeah. That's what the Bible is. It's a collection of primary sources on the life of Jesus and the growth of the early church, uh, at least the New Testament. So so they're not believe- So I don't believe fideism exists. I believe that most people believe on some evidence, even if you don't like the evidence. So number one, right. you could be saying they're lying. Number yeah. two, you could be saying, no, you're actually confused. You thought you came based on the evidence, but you came because of some other reason in conjunction, and the real evidence really wasn't the thing. So maybe you got married to a Christian woman, and uh, you're an atheist, and 
it was making it hard that you were an atheist and she was a Christian. Yeah. And so she gave you some, or some friend gave you some Christian apologetics books and you read those and that became your way to say you now believe. But the truth is it really wasn't those books. Those were an excuse. The reality was you became a Christian because your wife was a Christian and you wanted not to have that friction in your relationship. Okay, here's where, this is what we're saying. And I told him this. I told the guy I was principally talking to this. He said, I think that it just gives people permission to believe. Apologetics just gives people permission to believe. I said, I am inclined to agree. In fact, it's odd that you put it in those terms because that is exactly what the way William Lane Craig has always put it. That when someone asks, do you think that people understand this like weird argumentation and stuff the first time they ever hear it in a debate? And he says, no, they probably don't. But we've seen people come to faith immediately after the debate. You know why? Because they saw that there seems to be good reason. And this Christian apologist seems like he knows what he's talking about better than that other guy, the atheist guy does. And it just kind of shows them that though they've been told that they have to check their brain at the door to be a Christian, they don't. And there right. are intellectual reasons. And, and, yeah, and, and it gives them permission to believe. And guess what? Science does the same thing for atheists who are not scientists. Because I was listening to Eric Hernandez, our friend, talk to T Jump. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing. I don't know what his academic credentials are, but I bet not much because I asked for a source from Eric to get from the guy and I came back with a Netflix documentary. So. Probably not a scientist. But yeah, he says science makes all these claims, these grand claims about what science has done, okay? Mm -hmm. And what science will do in the future, even if we, it hasn't done it yet. Just this, this faith that science will eventually... It's scientism. Oh, by the way, I, let me pause you for a okay. minute. The claim T-Jump made was that if you took a, an ape's brain... No, a cat's, cat's brain. brain or something... Yes and cut it in half after showing the animal a picture and of laid like, it on a piece of paper of a it'll, cow it'll... if you show like i don't know if it was a cow but like a picture of a cow and then you no, put the pattern the uh, the half the brain against a certain piece of paper that you, that it actually on the paper the i guess the residue of the yeah. brain juice or whatever would right. be in the shape of right. whatever it's, shape it's the like animal was looking at. It's like the shroud of Turan after you do an animal... There's religion everywhere in science. I, okay, it's, I want to We got to do that show. I'm not show. saying that to make fun of it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to make fun of this. I want to uh, know religion. if that's real. Because you're yeah. saying you asked for evidence... Yeah. Or Eric did, or something. Uh, and the answer was, I saw it in a documentary. No, I asked, the, I asked for a source. Okay. I wanted the source and on it. He said, that. I saw it in a random documentary. R right. Okay. Uh, I want to know if anybody listening knows what that is, I want it. Yeah. I mean, I see he, a also he also misunderstood the uh, point. That, that impression is an impression of an image. It wasn't the, the actual thought experience the of the experience, cat, which right. is, totally went past New Ted because all he's thinking about is cat brains. Because I mean, scientists love animal sacrifice, you know. Uh, but or scientists. But I don't think this guy's a scientist. I think he made a, took biology in college, like I did, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. But not a scientist. Just think, just so what he thinks is he doesn't understand all the science. There's a lot of people like that who don't understand all the science, but they know that there are scientists out there who got that covered, right? Yeah. So we rely on. So them. so Joe Pugh. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna help hold, you. Out. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Joe okay, Pugh. Is sitting in the pew, and maybe he doesn't have all the the, the same level of uh, apologetic acumen that you do, mm -hmm. but he knows that you got this. So I like, just trust. There's guys that have that covered, right? And that's that's to me the equivalent. So just because Joe Pew doesn't, the difference know, is Joe Pew's not going to start a YouTube channel and go talking about the evidence. Well, he He's might. Point there people. are there are some yeah, but if he does, he should there. he should go study the evidence, for right? It, right. But I, but I, but I'm saying is there's there's people like that both sides. Still has no impact on whether or not the evidence is good or bad. But just because Joe Pugh is like, I'm not going to sit around and think about um, the the appearances of Jesus to 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 people after the resurrection. Yeah. I'm not going to think about that all day long. But thank God, Braxton Hunter thinks about that all day long. Yeah. And so if I don't. That sounded good to me, and so I'm going to believe based on his arguments. Science sounds good. Uh, Lawrence Krauss said something. Uh, I'm going to believe him. Mm -hmm. People do that all the time. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they weren't convinced based on the evidence that was presented to them. Now, I'm going to say something. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, and I think you're right. And I'm going to say something that you're not going to like, but it's I'm messing up your hustle and flow now with this. I'm going to say something that sounds measured and professorial about this. Okay. And I think that happens with most of these kind of people. 
in the case of this Tom Jump that we're talking about, I do think that guy has read a lot of material, has studied this, is thinking about it all day long. But it's still true what you're saying. Like I'm trying. No, to, I agree with that. He's but it's still true reading, what you're saying. He probably on Google Scholar reading. But I'm the saying. Next, but I think you're still yeah. right. He hasn't. He wasn't the one that carried out the experiments, right? Right. He's taking that on the word of someone. Yeah. Right. Okay. I just want to make that caveat because no. we're 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 big enough now that people watch our channel. Yeah. No. But I'm saying I'm I'm saying w- whether he is. A scientist himself, or not, I have no idea. I said I have no idea what his credentials. Right. But what he's telling me is that there are scientists out there who've done this. They've got that covered. It's in the bag. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And there are people in the pews who are not credentialed in apologetics who are like, yeah. They're trusting their guys. Right. And that's what happened. Now, to me, if 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 you're a biology professor and that's all you do is teach courses... You're not a scientist to me, unless you're in the lab doing stuff, hmm. right? You put on your lab coat, go to your priesthood, perform your rituals, and your make your prophecies, and yes, yeah, very religious stuff. Unless you're doing that, you're not really. A, you can call yourself a scientist, but I mean, come on, you're you're doing what I do, but you're you're talking about what molecules people have labeled things yeah. in 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 the in creation. That's all you're doing is this is we call this a stomach, and we call this uh, an intestines. Yeah, you just, just Ernest Rutherford said that it, anything you know, physics is the only real science. Everything else is stamp collecting. So you just kind of so so. Um, I don't know what this guy's credentials are. I don't know what Pine Creeks or whoever we're talking about. I don't know what their credentials are either. But all I do know is that they're appealing to their authorities. Some people appeal to Christian authorities. So what? You know, and this is the thing. So what? You, you, some sometimes I hear this refrain. Well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I, they'll agree. They'll be like, I'm not a uh, expert in this stuff. You're not William Lane Craig. So why why don't we not talk about that evidence? Hold up. I've gone to school for this. Right. <laughs> I'm not William Lane Craig, granted, but I'm more than happy. But you have and been frankly, labeled the like, next William Lane Craig, Frank, Frank, haven't you? Well, I, that's didn't, didn't, ridiculous. Didn't all the like Mike Lacona and all those people? All I don't know that Mike Lacona said that. Who said that? Tim Stratton may have said that. <laughs> oh, Tim Stratton may have said that. <laughs> which is all. Which is pretty good. No, but, it's I, good after he finishes his doctorate. Yeah, then when he says yeah, it, it's good. But here's. But, here's but he the, doesn't have the credentials yet. But here's, to say that you're the next. I one. think he said that. <laughs> if I'm wrong, somebody said it. But here's the thing. I'm not. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. No, you're way better than William. No, I would never think of myself that way. I think you're way better. But here's the thing. Have I had several live public academic debates on this issue? Yes. Have I written journal, published journal articles at major schools? Yes. I mean, I'm not trying to give you my, my like resume, but I've taught and studied this stuff for what, 15 years now. So I'm the point is you may not feel capable to talk about the evidence, whoever you are, but I feel comfortable talking about the evidences that I use. I'm comfortable talking about that. You want to talk about the free will argument? You want to talk about the Kalam? You want to talk about the resurrection case that I bring? I'm happy to talk about it. Don't you feel that way about your areas of expertise? Yeah, and I, and I also, but I'm a little bit more democratic about it. I'm happy for anybody. Joe well, Pugh. Who, uh, says, who said? Yeah, I didn't say they yeah, weren't. Yeah, no, I'm saying... Pull out a. Pull they're out a, saying. Pull they're a, saying. I'm not an expert. You're not an expert. Let's not talk about this. And I'm like, hold up. Speak for yourself. No. no, no okay. <laughs> but if they said, I'm not a scientist. You're not a scientist. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure. I'm whoa, not a scientist. But I'm gonna like. Whoa. 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 But we can read science stuff and right. process it and discuss it. Right. We're not idiots. Yeah. You're not an idiot. You don't have to be. A, in in fairness to T Jump or whoever. You don't go to work every day looking at a microscope. That's fine. You read all the stuff that you can get your hands on written by scientists. Awesome. So let's talk about it. Now, others are like the other guy that says, and I think he, I think that guy that Eric was talking to would love to talk about science and philosophy. He seemed like that he's cool with that. Yeah, he's uh, more evidence. But the other guy w- uh, that, that you're talking about was like, I'm not a scientist, you're not a scientist, so let's not talk about science. Well, hang on. I No, I'm not a scientist, and I don't actually like talking about science. But if you want to talk about something from science, get pull out the journal, let's read it, let's analyze it, and let's discuss what they say and see if it's a bunch of bogus nonsense or if it makes sense. Because yeah. 
I'm sorry. Uh, this is gonna. This is where everyone's gonna hate me again. But I've lost all all sort of. Uh, res- there, there's nothing. You say peer review means nothing to me. Peer review doesn't mean anything. I, I could care less. There has been so many times where people have written utterly bogus journal articles, got them peer reviewed, got them printed, even win awards, and they're like, "Yeah, we just made all that up." Mm-hmm. It, it happened. There, Three times a year you read about that story in any field. Mm-hmm. Peer review means nothing. As a barber, I was peer reviewed. Okay. We had <laughs> other barbers would come to our shop and inspect, you know. And a barber's and, and you were practically useful. Yes. As a barber. <laughs> yeah. I, I, accountants have peer review law for everyone does yeah. peer review doesn't mean anything. No. And it doesn't mean anything in academia anymore. You can talk about peer review all day long. You can talk about it in science, you can talk about peer reviewed articles in theology. I'm sorry, I'm not impressed by it anymore. It's it's mostly yeah, okay. Because there's always going to be people that agree with you, and those will be the people that publish. Or there's them. always going to be people who disagree with you, and they want to take you down. And so they're, you know, it, it because it, it's people involved. One last thing, peer reviewed. So, I mean, so this, this. So let's uh, just examine the the peer reviewed article and see if it's a bunch so, of nonsense. So one last thing, this thing yeah. about the evidence. This it can't possibly. I can't let it be called good evidence. So I can't believe anyone ever came to believe this based on the evidence. I need it not to be good evidence. Well, I think, well, hold on. I think that it's yeah. the impetus for the Christ mythers out there. I think that, like, because there's, it's, it's a fringe group that believe that there was yeah. no Jesus, that Jesus never existed. And I can't psychologize this, but I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to speculate. Now, when I speculate, I'm t- I'll tell you I'm speculating. But to me, this is, this is, seems strong, is the apologetics, the evidence, the stuff came out. And it was like, dadgummit, people are still believing based on this evidence. We got, we got to do something else. Our, our, our mockery, our, this stuff's not working. What are we going to do? Let's go further. Let's just say Jesus never existed. Then none of your evidence matters because he never even existed to begin with. Let's go that far. Because it's like, what else, do you, what else can you say? Yeah. Where else can you go? It seems like the, no matter what you try evangelists and evangelistic apologists are still going to use the evidence and people are still going to believe in part or mostly because of the evidence in various cases. And you just don't know where else to go with this. And here's the thing. It's your incredulity. It's, it's your, you can't imagine that people would come to faith by the evidence. Yeah. We can't imagine as Christians that people don't see the evidence. Flat earthers can't imagine why you, you know, you don't just see the evidence. The Earth looks flat. Mm-hmm. NASA faked the moon landing. Something something with less computing power than a Game Boy took some people to the moon six times, but yet in the 70s, but now we can't go now. Yeah. You're being so arbitrary about good evidence and bad evidence that you actually have to concede that to the flat earthers, except that you won't because everyone's decided that they're wacko. Fine. Maybe they are. But the standard, your standards don't even meet their standards because... I'm just saying, people are just decide. That's not evident. Oh well, well here's a here's video of us on the moon. That's a Hollywood studio. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, that's what they sound like to yeah. me sometimes. Yeah. Just admit you're not convinced. You show me all this evidence. I'm, but, or we can play that game. I love to play the hyperbolic game. There ain't a single shred of evidence for evolution. It's all bad evidence. Yeah. What about this evidence? No, it's just bad. That doesn't count as evidence. Because <laughs> it doesn't convince me. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, if that's, my a, friends. if that's a standard, then let's throw rhetoric all over the place. Yeah. There's not a shred of evidence for atheism. Yeah. You know? Uh, so all of you atheists... That's the point of the so video. So all you, Matt, there's not a shred of evidence that Matt Dillahanty is an atheist. There's 100% evidence that he's an agnostic. You like that? <laughs> we can do it. I mean, that might actually be... But here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. I mean, we can do this all day long. If but, this is a standard, we can sit on the internet like these guys. Like we can get our faces real close to the camera, real to, like that one guy, and yeah. just start spouting off stuff. Yeah, I'm all for it. Well, fun. that was the point of the video was to show that yeah, they make some. They do talk a little bit about the evidence, like to tick that box. Yeah. But it's really easy to respond to, like trivially easy to respond to. Most of what we get is mockery, rhetoric. This kind of stuff. I was told that it looked bad. I was told by an atheist that it seemed defensive that I mentioned mockery 24 times 
in the video. Well, the video is about the fact that it's mockery, so you're going to get me talking about mockery. Yeah, you mockery. had a, like an but here's the thing. thing on I, I mentioned yeah. it 24 or 26 times on whatever he said, and I thought to myself, what seems more defensive, that I mention a word 24 times or that you went through and paused the video and wrote it down <laughs> 24 <laughs> times? You know, I don't know what seems more <laughs> defensive. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know. We've done some mockery here, but as we said in the first word of our last video, mockery is sometimes warranted. It's not always bad. The thing is you've got to actually present other stuff yeah. to back it up. Or we can play by the rule. Let's do a whole show where we just act like YouTube atheists. We have to put the camera real close to our faces. You know, let's just do the whole show like that. Just make lambastic claims. Just you know, landish claims about it. You know what I'm thinking right now? It would be so much fun. I got praised the other day in the apologetic support group or whatever because they're like, I love your tone. I love how you're so even keel through this thing. And people are going to continue to see that this disparity between the way um, uh, you know, skeptics approach it, and the way we Christian apologists, it's this even kill, you know, straight. Yeah, then they watch this, episode. and then they get to see this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, 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 it's it's answering fools according to their folly. Right? Do you do that or not? Depends on the day. That's, I mean, you know. All right. Well, listen, this has been an episode of Trinity Radio. Please become a student at Trinity College of the Bible and Theological Seminary where you can learn the good reasons to believe that Christianity is true um, and probably have a personal experience with God while you're here because most of our professors are also pretty pastoral. And that's because people. God exists and there's not a shred of evidence that disproves Christianity. Not at all. And... Uh, also, you listen can, to our. You can do that by going to Trinity yeah. Sim, Trinity S E M dot E D U, and filling out that evaluation form on the side of the page that's a request for more information. Listen to saying? our sister podcast, The Bible Rowdown with Matt Chisholm and Billy Winland, or Soteriology 101 with Leighton Flowers and the Narrow or Path. Or learn the Bible. Yeah. That's a novel idea with, with Steve Gregg and the Narrow yeah. Path. You can go through the whole Bible in verse by verse. If you would like to buy Brax and Hunter coffee, you have five bucks, become a patron, click somewhere up yeah, here. If somewhere. you would like to buy me a steak dinner, click up here and commit yeah, $20. Accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, really, we appreciate it. The patrons have gone down a little bit. I'll tell you that. Even though our numbers are going up, patrons have gone down a little like bit. Like our dollars are going up, but the patrons... No, no, no. The, I think the number of patrons and the money has gone down a bit. Okay, the money's gone down quite a bit. I think part of that's because Patreon has now taken like a higher percentage or something. But even though our, our number of listeners and viewers is going up, so um, I don't know. Uh, but if but for those of you that do give, we really appreciate it. We do give you yeah. extra content. The other day, the the video that's made this buzz lately that I'm taught that we've been referencing, uh, I released it early so that people got early access. Um, and we and Dr. Pritchett gave away a lecture the other day for free. So uh, you want to get in there and get that lecture. Um, I want to get in there and get me. I'll be, maybe I'll become a patron so I can go watch your lectures. All right. Well, listen, we've enjoyed this. Stick around for the last word. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time on Trinity Radio. This is the last word. Nothing. I have nothing of substance to say right now. Um, Lawrence Krauss has several definitions of nothing that he says scientists use, and one of them should surely be... Um, saying meaningless gibberish into a microphone. That that counts. So even though this is something, it's still nothing. So maybe there is something to that. I don't know. But right now, I have nothing important to say. Certainly nothing comparable to what Braxton said in the first word, which was brilliant. So I'm just going to sit here and say, Braxton never turns off the noises that his computer makes. Well, there's something. If you would like more content, click here and keep watching Bible Studies, click up here. And finally, we want you to subscribe. We need more subscribers, so click here.